Hi guys, Asmo here and this is my League Start leveling guide for Caustic Arrow Toxic Rain Pathfinder. This is a build which uses bow attacks that deal chaos damage and in my opinion this is currently the best starter build in the game. It is very rare to find a build that has all of these characteristics. Extremely fast clear speed, easy bossing, good survivability, able to do all map mods without any adjustment, without exceptions, has great quality of life and is easy and comfortable to play, works great as a league starter with zero budget, is hardcore and solo self found viable, can be leveled with the same skill from the very beginning of the game until maps and scales well into the late game, reaching millions of DPS if you want to invest in it. I recommend this build to anyone who is new to PoE or simply wants the most well-rounded league starter capable of doing all content. This is going to be part one of the guide which covers leveling in great detail. This video will guide you through leveling your character from level one until maps in an efficient and quick way. You don't need any leveling uniques, currency or gems. This will be a fully solo self found fresh start. In the description you will find the link to the path of building community fork version of the program which we use to plan out the passive skill tree and the POB for this build. There are multiple versions of the skill tree uh, which you will be able to follow while leveling. There are also notes for all the skill gem setups during this guide. I will not be focusing much on the passives because it is all shown in the POB and I'll mention only just the most notable breakpoints as we go. So let's get started. Naturally you wanna pick a ranger and after killing Hillock grab Caustic Arrow from Tarkley and look for the following green 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 and green green red linked. So you want a three link with all green or, and also all green and one red. Movement speed boots and three socketed items with green and red sockets. Apart from the three links, you're going to need three green sockets and two red sockets for all your skill gems. And your setup at the start will be a caustic arrow linked with pierce and a burning arrow for extra single target damage. Go first to the submerged passage, grab the waypoint and go to the tidal island to kill the hellrake. Open up with caustic arrow and while the green toxic ground is dealing damage, spam some burning arrows for extra damage. Make sure to refresh the caustic arrow as it expires to try and keep both dots up. You'll basically double your damage. Then grab puncture, dash, quicksilver flask, mirage archer and also buy steel skin from Nessa. Uh, check the vendor again for the gear with the right sockets and also for movement speed boots. Uh, you can type NN in the search to highlight movement speed boots very quickly. Uh, we do not use onslaught because we mostly kill with damage over time that doesn't activate onslaught and mirage archer ends up clearing more monsters uh, while allowing us to uh, run more and giving us more quicksilver charges which ends up in the end to be about the same speed but mirage archer is actually a gem that we'll need in the end game. So make sure to socket all of your gems and proceed to the submerged passage. Once you see a long bridge or an orange doorway on the minimap, leave the portal and continue on to the ledge. Make sure to not log out or the portal will disappear and we need it for later. Sockets are like one of the most important things to focus on early on. You will need to check the vendors whenever you're in town. They reset every time you level up. And it is very helpful to have a, like a custom loot filter that will highlight and notify you whenever you drop the right sockets on the right items. I have made a ranger bow leveling loot filter which I'm using in this run and you can see it. It's also available as an option for Patreon supporters. You'll find the link to it in the description if you're interested. Make sure that you're also picking up magic and rare items and selling them for transmutes. You will need to buy three scale gems that cost a transmute in act one and you also want extra one or two to craft your resists later. Do not spend them on anything else. Put on a short bow whenever you can. As far as the weapon goes, we do not care about the damage it deals, we only care about the attack speed and plus two gem levels as well as damage over time multiplier. You might end up using your short bow until the maps, it doesn't really matter unless you get one of those stats on it. Because we care about the attack speed, uh, we're going to be using either short bow, grove bow or thicket bow since they are the quickest bases with 1.5 attack speed per second. Um, if you find an early alchemy 
Alchemy or an Essence. I like using it on an item that will stick with me for a while and has a chance of rolling something useful. Usually I use it on a three linked pair of boots, which can give me movement speed or like in this case on a three linked short bow that will boost my early DPS against Brutus. Once you pick up a Primal Spirit node, you can socket your steel skin and put it on the left click. It will periodically cast itself automatically, making you more tanky. Take the prison waypoint and go back to town and then through the portal that we left back to submerged. Kill the crab boss using the rotation of caustic arrow, puncture and two or three burning arrows. Rotating those three skills and making sure all three dots are always up will boost your damage by a lot. Afterwards you can grab void manipulation from Nessa and put it with your caustic arrow instead of pierce. If you have some spare green linked sockets you can put pierce with puncture or burning arrow that will allow you to hit bosses a little bit easier without those pesky uh, skeletons getting in the way and blocking bosses from getting hit by it. It is very optional though you don't need that. Uh, kill Brutus with the rotation of your three attacks and pick up Smoke Mine and Vitality. I recommend using Smoke Mine instead of Dash for now. It is worth getting used to the Smoke Mine skill because it is an amazing time sa saver. It gives you a movement speed boost whenever you can pick up some junk weapons with green sockets and put them in your secondary weapon set. You can level dash in those offhand weapons until we start using it again in Act 6. Make sure to turn on Vitality. This aura will make you very tanky and is borderline broken. You just need to make sure that you're using it. Do not skip that. It is extremely important. Uh, at this point, you should also start looking for more sockets in your gear in preparation for Act 2. Keep an eye out for an extra green and an extra blue socket because that's what we're gonna need. In the ship's graveyard zone, grab the waypoint first and then look for the ship graveyard cave, pick up the all flame and skip, skip the sea witch boss, continue to the cavern of wrath and use the waypoint there to go back to town. This is where your second three link, the green, green, red is going to be needed. If you don't have it, just use an item with green and red linked together and try to get the green, green, red three link as soon as you can. Pick up Toxic Rain from Nessa as your reward, buy Ballista Totem Support as well as Void Manipulation. You will need two transmutations for them. Now your setup should be Caustic Arrow, Void Manipulation, Mirage Archer, and then Toxic Rain, Void Manipulation, Ballista Totem Support, then uh, Puncture, Burning Arrow, and also Smoke Mine, Vitality, and Steel Skin. Make sure to put all of your skills on attack without move. This is very important, especially for Ballista Totem Support and Smoke Mine. Do it for all of the attack skills as well. Go ahead and obliterate Fairgraves. If you don't have two Sapphire Rings yet, you can sell an Iron Ring and a blue skill gem. They cost a single Scroll of Wisdom uh, for a Cold Res Ring at any vendor. If you have your hideout unlocked and you are level 12, you can also go ahead and spend a couple of transmutes to put Cold Res on your gear you can simply put a white item on your bench and use the resistance craft which will make it a magic item of craft and with two sapphire rings and a cold res craft on your gear you can easily get about 70 percent cold res which makes the mervale fight about 10 times easier with that setup we have we simply put down three ballistas next to mervale drop a caustic arrow on her and keep up the puncture plus burning arrow debuffs the ballistas will continuously deal damage while we rotate the three dots and if you have the proper setup and use it correctly the fight will be over very very quickly. In Act 1 we needed transmutes to buy our skill gems and in Act 2 we're going to need alterations. You get them by selling identified rare and magic items, so prioritize identifying rares, especially boots or other pieces of gear that you can potentially use yourself. Uh, Act 2 can be a little confusing, so I'll be showing the order which I like to follow on any character that kills all of the bandits, which is what we will be doing here. Um, first, we go to the old fields. If you see the entrance to the den, you can leave a portal next to it and continue to the crossroads waypoint. Go back to town from that waypoint, back through your portal, portal and into the den. Kill the white beast and exit to the character selection to go back to town without using a portal scroll. Uh, get your second Quicksilver and take the waypoint to the crossroads again. Then go to the top left to the Chambers of Sins. And if you have a spare Topaz Ring, Lightning Res will be useful soon. So make sure to equip that if you have it. Make sure to keep checking the vendors. You're going to need one green and one blue socket soon. 
After killing Fidelitas, pick up a Blood Rage as your reward and buy Skitterboats from Ina. Uh, next we will go through the Riverways, make sure to grab the Waypoint there and continue to the Western Forest. You can use Blood Rage whenever you want, the Vitality Aura will sustain your health through the degen easily and killing monsters will grant you Frenzy Charges, which will give you 12% more damage. As you run through the zone and kill monsters, the Blood Rage buff gets refreshed, so just remember to press it at the beginning of each zone. I personally forget it more often than not, but it's just my ADHD brain, you should do it pretty much in every zone. Uh, make sure the Skitterbots are on, uh, they will also give you more damage on the enemies they shock and they will give you some extra slow on the monsters they touch. In Western Forest, follow the road until you find the waypoint. And if the waypoint is on the right side of the road, go right. If it's on the left, then go left. And that is the side that you will find Alira on. Kill her and continue south until the end of the road. Kill the black guards, open the way forward and then go up on the opposite side of the road than you came from. The weaver's chambers are across the map from Alira. Uh, doing all of this in this order allows us to clear the zone in one go and log out at the end without wasting any portals or backtracking. Kill Weaver, it should be very easy, just make sure to keep Ballistas up, they'll take care of the ads, log back to town and pick up Vicious Projectiles as your reward and then buy an extra one from Hina. Put Vicious Projectiles instead of Mirage Archer in your Caustic Arrow and another Vicious Proj instead of Void Manipulation in your Toxic Rain and level both of the gems you replaced in your offhand because you'll need them later. Once you are about level 19, you can start looking for two stone rings at the vendor. Whenever you see one that grants 16% to resistance of both elements, buy it and throw an essence on it. This will help you increase your resists greatly. You can also buy leather belt with like 40 or close to 40 life and throw an essence on it as well or simply benchcraft a resistance you need on it. Next we go to crossroads and head south east to the fell shrine ruins to complete the trial of ascendancy in the crypt, log out immediately after completing it and again through the crossroads we go through the broken bridge to kill Creighton. Only one bandit left after that so head back to the riverways waypoint, go top left to the wetlands and if you find the waypoint you can use it to go back to Lion Eyes Watch for your skill point reward from Bestel and this can potentially allow you to pick up the Hunter's Gambit passive which is a major power spike that will help you kill Oak like he's nothing. So kill Oak, uh, grab the two passive skill points from Eramir and continue to the Val Ruins. If you grab the Entropy passive before uh, Val, that will be another power spike which should allow you to kill Val much quicker. Uh, next to the Caverns waypoint you will find a movement speed recipe for boots. You will need three augmentations for that, so make sure that you're not using your augmentations on your gear until you have more than three of them. This craft is very useful if, like me in this run, you'll find a good pair of boots without movement speed but with an open prefix. Okay, the quickest of crafting lessons for those of you who just got lost. Make sure you have advanced mod descriptions enabled in your UI options. If you do, then when you hover over an item and press Alt, you will see some of the modifiers uh, on the item say prefix modifier and some of them say suffix modifier. A magic item can have one of each, a rare item can have three of each. For example, life is always a prefix, resistances are always a suffix. If you have a rare item with only two suffixes, that means there is an empty suffix, which means an empty space for you to put a suffix, like the resistance on that item, as long as it doesn't already have the same resistance on it. So for example, you cannot craft fire res on an item that already has fire res, but you can craft cold or lightning res. Got it? So in this case, my boots have an empty prefix, movement speed is a prefix, I can craft movement speed on these boots since they don't already have any movement speed on them. Next, continue up the pyramid to the Val and kill him with the full arsenal of your abilities. Make sure to pop Blood Rage when killing the adds for some extra frenzy charges and if Val doesn't troll you too much, you should be able to down him very quickly. In Act 3, we're going to need one extra blue gem, but we will stop needing one of the green ones since Burning Arrow will be replaced by the Despair Curse. Act 3 is also where I usually cap my resistances or at least come close to it, prioritize lightning resist for crematorium, then fire resist just before gravitious and finally 
called before piety. Uh, once you've reached level 24, the vendors will start selling you four links. Keep an eye out for a four link on an evasion base, since items with dexterity requirement are more likely to roll green sockets when you use a chromatic orb on it. You will need first a green, 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 red four link, and later a four green four link. Also keep checking for two stone rings with 16% resist to cap your resists much more easily. After crematorium, swap burning arrow for the despair curse and your single target should now be much higher. Go through the sewers, pick up the three busts and the waypoint and continue to the marketplace. Grab the waypoint there as well as head into the catacombs to complete your trial and then log out immediately after you get it and grab your quest rewards. Make sure to check for potential four links at the vendor and go back to marketplace to find your way to the battlefront. Skip the marketplace quest item, it's a massive waste of time, we're not gonna be doing that. In the battlefront you wanna grab the waypoint and pick up the ribbon spool and head northeast to the docks. If you are level 25 or below you can stay here for a couple of levels, the docks have a lot of magic monsters in them and magic monsters give increased experience. Either way when you have the sulfide quest item from the docks, go back to the battlefront through the waypoint and head north to the solaris temple. In terms of the rewards I prefer grabbing the the lapis amulet for some extra mana sustain but it doesn't really matter that much. If you haven't capped your fire res now is a good time to do it. Uh, you can also skip Gravicious if you want, you don't need any of the gems from his quest so go ahead and, and don't fight him if you don't need to. Uh, Piety should be a very easy fight if you have high resistances because you can simply face tank her and melt her down. After Piety we head to the gardens to do the trial and then go straight to Dominus. We're skipping the library, it is not needed for now. The Dominus fight should be also very easy if you have lightning resistance capped. Just make sure to place your ballistas near the enemies, drop your caustic arrow at them and make sure you use the despair curse as well. It is a massive damage boost at this point and you can still use puncture for a little bit of extra damage if you're able to keep up all the other debuffs out at the same time as well. Um, progress to the next act and once you get to the crystal veins waypoint you should be around level 33 which means it's the perfect time to do our lab and with vitality and smoke mine the traps are very easy to deal with you can safely run through many things after killing Izaro you will grab your rewards you can enchant your gloves if you want and pick your first ascendancy points. We ascend as a pathfinder and pick nature's reprisal first. This will give you a lot of extra damage and a big boost to your AoE which helps with your clear speed. Continue through the crystal veins waypoint to either Calm's or Daresa's dream. Grab the waypoint at the beginning of the next zone afterwards and then do the other dream zone before progressing further. This will keep you more in range of the zone levels. Do your best to cap your fire res before fighting Calm and cold res before fighting Dareso. After killing Calm and Dareso, I recommend grabbing a sacred life flask and crafting bleed removal on it. You can do this very easily if you completed at least one Einhar mission and killed some of the beasts on the way. Simply go to menagerie, put your flask in the altar and select add a mod to a flask of staunching. That is the bleed removal and immunity. In the next zone, Belly of the Beast, uh, monsters inflict very strong bleed and this flask will make sure that you're never going to die to them. From this point on, try to always have a bleed removal flask with you and remember which hotkey it is on. Piety and Malakai should be very easy, just make sure to keep your ballistas up and run in circles while putting down costing, Caustic Arrow and the Despair Curse to keep them up as much as possible. Your, res your resistances should be now capped at 75% and your job now is to find the gear that maintains your links while increasing the amount of life you have. You can also start over capping your resistances, you will need 105% res for Act 6, any way more than that is unnecessary for now. At this point I usually have a 4 link toxic rain and a 3 link caustic arrow. I recommend prioritizing 4 linking your toxic rain because otherwise you'd have to run her library for the swift affliction gem and it's completely unnecessary as you can see a 3 link caustic arrow is plenty enough damage to kill everything with ease. 
After killing Maligaro, you can grab the optional rewards. I recommend getting a stone golem and a withering touch. If you link them together, you can have your golem help you with a little bit of uh, regen and also applying wither with his hits. This combo will boost your defense and offense, but it is completely optional. Only do it if you have a spare green plus red link somewhere in your gear that you're not currently using. I did not bother altering my sockets for it in this run since the damage and survivability felt incredible anyway. In Act 5, after killing uh, Casticus or whatever he's called, the guy who drops his balls, take the waypoint in the Oriath square and grab the silver flask and try to keep it up while running as much as you can. It will greatly increase your clear speed. This is also the time that you should be picking up acrobatics. The monsters in this act hit really hard and the extra dodge will make you much more tanky. In Chamber of Innocence, grab the waypoint and if you need to catch up on levels or improve your gear, this is the perfect zone to do it. It has a lot of magic packs which give increased experience and you can stay here for a few levels and keep resetting the zone by control clicking on it from the waypoint and opening a new instance. Once you're comfortable to progress, you can kill Innocence, you should have enough damage to phase him before he really does anything to you, which makes this fight very very simple. Make sure you use your blood rage to stack up frenzy charges on the add phases and you will be able to melt the boss even faster. Head through the ruined square to the ossuary to pick up the quest item and the recipe and then keep going left until you reach roughly the middle of the square, leave the portal there and continue going south to the reliquary. Uh, circle around uh, the reliquary picking up all the quest items and head back to the waypoint in that zone, go back to town and uh, pick up all of your rewards and then back through the portal that you left which will bring you very close to the cathedral rooftop entrance. You can temporarily allocate a couple of skill points into some extra life for the Kitava fight, but after that you will want to respect them and grab the Charisma passive, since after Kitava we will need to use some extra auras in our setup. Focus on dodging Kitava's abilities and keeping your dots up whenever it's safe to use your skills. If you focus on dodging you should be pretty safe and uh, this fight is not that difficult because we deal a lot of damage without having to attack that much. The first thing you should do in Act 6 is to make sure that your elemental resists are capped. Uh, then we're going to do the Lily's quest and pick up some extra gems. From here we'll need Malevolence, Flesh and Stone, Second Wind and Swift Affliction. Your setup should now be Toxic Rain with Ballista support, Vicious Proj and Void Manipulation and then Caustic Arrow with Vicious Proj, Void Manipulation and Swift Affliction. Malevolence, which we use instead of Scarabots now, Flesh and Stone in Sand Stance for big boost to our survivability, and Vitality Aura at as high level as you can run depending on your strength and mana. Smoke Mine and Dash linked to Second Wind, as well as Despair and Blood Rage. You can now also put Detonate Mine on your left click and use Smoke Mine for the movement speed boost, combining it with Dash for even more mobility. Your character should feel very strong now. If you see a Delirium Mirror, you can go ahead and do like three or four rewards, depending on how many monsters there are in the zone, and then ditch it. This is uh, something that should give you a lot more currency to play with. Your character should be very strong now, strong enough to progress through the rest of the acts, including doing all of the side bosses. By now, you will usually have either a plus one bow or some damage over time multiplier, which is what I had. Uh, this will give you enough damage to easily destroy all of the bosses. You can also craft attack speed or chaos damage on a suffix on your bow. I mean, just look at the damage. Caustic Arrow is like notorious for having really bad single target, but by using a second four link with the Toxic Rain Ballistas, which we don't have to cast ourselves, we are doing way more than double of our normal damage. Uh, without having to cast Toxic Rain, we can also curse the enemies with despair and dodge all the abilities. It is extremely easy and uh, the, we, do, we can dodge all the boss mechanics if the bosses are even able to do them because we often melt them before that. Later on we'll be switching to Arrow Nova for the Caustic Arrow, but I do not recommend doing that before getting a plus 2 bow or a 5 link. Your damage will be much worse with it and you'll have to swap gems for bosses, which is not a fun thing to do. So I recommend sticking with this setup until you're able to craft a better bow, which I'll show you when and how to do later in this video. After killing the Brian King, 
progress to the broken bridge and do the locket quest for an extra utility flask since you'll be able to pick up the dodge flask in uh, act 10 you may want to take the jade or the basalt flask i'd probably recommend the jade first i personally took the dodge flask because i value phasing extremely highly so i didn't want to have to wait for it but if you take the jade or basalt flask i also recommend picking up the freedom of movement passive at some point if you can, you can also try to get an Enduring Mana Flask. Enduring Mana Flask is much easier to use than a regular one and with more utility flasks you'll be spamming them a lot. It's just much easier to piano roll or fall like four flasks at the same time without having to think about them. Uh, at least that's how I prefer to do it. Uh, grab the Crossroads Waypoint and go to the Fell Shrine Ruins to pick up the Maligaros map and then enter it from the Chamber of Sins and kill Mar Maligaro. And the rest of the acts is very straightforward, your build should be strong enough to tackle the hardest bosses including Groost and Groothkull which you can safely kill as soon as you approach them, you don't need to leave them for later with how strong the build is at that time. But if you want to deal even more single target damage, you could potentially switch Flesh and Stone for Skitterbots. But as you can see, we melt Arakali without getting any extra phases. So it is better, in my opinion, to just keep the Blind Aura on for safety. And by now, you should also have the Wind Dancer Keystone, which synergizes extremely well with it. Dodri fight is usually very scary and seems overtuned if your character doesn't deal enough damage. Normally you want to keep using the valve to remove the debuffs she puts on you, but with enough damage it doesn't really matter. The green phase is the safest, it just lowers the damage you deal, but she doesn't get any extra damage in it. After Dodri, uh, people have many different ways or they like to progress through these acts. My preferred way, which I found to be personally for me the quickest, um, is to head first to the quay, then always stick to the bottom left and follow the edge of the zone that way you will easily find the way do the ritual thingy and keep progressing until the Solaris temple then uh, kill the guard and grab the orb go back to the Dodri cesspool waypoint and then run through the grand promenade to the bathhouse do the high garden side quests trial etc and then continue on to the Lunaris concourse grab, grab the waypoint there and go kill the Lunaris temple guard now it's also a good time to do your second lab and after killing Izaro you wanna grab nature's boon passive. Your flask should now be easier to sustain and you'll be also taking less elemental damage. You'll notice that in the harbor bridge my loot filter starts highlighting certain items in orange. That is because harbor bridge is a zone level 60 which means it's the first zone where you can start regularly finding items for chaos recipe. If this is your first league you can catch up in levels in either harbor bridge or the blood aqueducts and start doing the chaos recipe. In blood aqueducts you can also find the humility divination cards but our build does not want tabula rasa which means you can safely sell all of them at the league start. If you want to maximize your experience gain though, I recommend briefly swapping to Aro Nova support and running uh, the Harbor Bridge. That is the quickest way to catch up on some XP at this stage. And this is also a good time to pick up some travel nodes on the passive skill tree, which do not increase your power much, but are necessary if you want to, for example, reach the big life wheel next to Sion. Whenever you're ready, you can progress through the rest of the acts. Once you get into zone level 64 or reach level 63 yourself, you'll be able to get a level 64 thicket bow. You'll notice that suddenly my filter shows a lot of bows with a green background. That means they are eligible for the plus two to bow skills mod on them. Uh, make sure to pick up a bunch of them, especially if they're already four linked and using alterations or essences try to get a plus two to level of both skill gems mod on it. You might not be able to get it before maps, but once you get it, you should use your caustic arrow with the arrow nova support in it. Once you reach Act 10 and get down from the cathedral rooftop, leave a portal there and head top right for the waypoint and then go back to town and take your portal back. This will save you a lot of backtracking time and you can now do the Valenta skill point. If you are not under leveled, she will be very easy at this time. Then you can take the waypoint you secured and continue with the rest of Act 10. If you need to catch up on levels, Desecrated Chambers is the best place to do it. You can get to whatever level you want before fighting Kitava to do it safely. You can also do your third lab at this point or do it straight after Kitava. 
In your third lab, we want to make sure that we pick up the ailment immunity during any flask effect. This will make everything much safer and easier to manage. It will be also easier to roll the flasks and secure other buffs on them. During the Kitava fight, again, just focus on dodging his abilities and your dots will take care of the rest. As you've seen, this whole run was deathless, so the character is very safe to play and the run took me 5 hours and 37 minutes. Now, I'm not a speedrunner, I kept farming multiple zones to get up in levels and grind some extra currency so that I can show the run being done properly, show you the right setup and all the crafts, and I took my sweet ass time with it. I wasn't trying to be fast but because this way of leveling is very efficient it didn't take that much and anyone can do it. Now I want to quickly show some of the early mapping with a bow you can very easily craft. If you get a plus two to socket at bow gems and slap some attack speed or chaos damage multiplier on it you're going to be able to run Arrow Nova and still deal pretty good damage. This is the same character you just saw me killing Kitava with, plus that bow. Uh, it clears maps very quickly and it is great to start with. Now this is another character which I leveled in solo self-found hardcore league called SSF HC Viable with a much worse bow, just a plus one to socketed gems. And as you can see, this is also zooming through the map. As you can see, there is nothing special, just like a plus one bow and a five link that I found in act 10 and used some alterations on it. As you grab more gear, levels and currency, you'll eventually want to swap to Toxic Rain as your main skill. In Trade League, I recommend buying Quill Rain and 5 linking it. That's the point at which you can switch to Toxic Rain and ditch the Ballista setup. But this is just a leveling guide. Next, I'll be working on a build guide for the late game version of this character. But hopefully this guide will help you reach maps much quicker and easier. It took a lot of work and planning. I've been testing a lot of different setups for weeks to figure out the optimal way of leveling it and I think Caustic Arrow Toxic Grain character is a fantastic starter build especially for the new Atlas expansion because of the ability to run all map mods and progress your Atlas quicker. You can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash Asmodeus stream and if you're interested in getting my loot filter it is available as an option for Patreon supporters. All the links are in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.